Hello, today I want to talk to you about a block that I've developed for the foreground of my print, the line block. Now, when I first started designing this and in earlier programs, what I had in my head was that I was going to have four blocks for this foreground. I was going to have a block for the turf areas, a block for the rock areas, a block to do shadows and some sort of outline block. And it's the outline block that I'm talking about today because it's kind of turned into something slightly unexpected. So let me show you it. It's not finished yet, but here it is in development. And I have also taken a rubbing so that you can see it a little bit more clearly if I put that next to it. So the rubbing, just to fill you in, is on newsprint and I've used a graphite stick. I do this all the time when I'm cutting so that I can see how things are progressing. So that's just a rubbing of this block. And you'll see that it's a very strong outline block. It's not just wrapping itself around the outline of the rocks, kind of what I intended it to be originally. But now it's going into the turf areas and it's quite dynamic lots and lots of lines and I guess it's a logical pro progression of what I've been doing. I think artists, um, you know, work's a constant exploration, it's constantly moving and I didn't expect it to turn out like it has but now it, it has turned out with this kind of very dynamic movement in it. I, I just want to show you why it's turned out like that. So a couple of things. I have always been fascinated by these rocky landscapes because I'm interested in the three dimensions of the rocks. I'm always drawn to the drawings of people who work in three dimensions like sculptors, like potters, jewellery makers. I'm always fascinated by their sketches because they're always describing things in three dimensions. And so when I draw, I'm kind of exploring that three dimensional feel and then I'm also interested in the line of my drawing. So if I just show you a couple of print examples, this little one here is quite recent and this is of the Yorkshire Moors and doing this set I got very interested in the idea of lines describing the shape of trees here and the shape of the landscape. So that kind of line idea you might have noticed my exclusive piece of jewellery here. This really is exclusive um, because I made it um, myself and then Ben very cleverly wrapped it. And this little um, wood block here is very much based on the trees in my print and it's cut into uh, maple wood. And it's very exclusive jewellery because I can assure you that I will not be going into production. It was a nightmare to cut, but you can see the line there. So let me just put that aside. I'm not even going to try and put it back on at the moment. So that's the next print along is this one of St Abbs up in Scotland. And this time I'm really starting to explore that line and the development of the line describing the shape of the land. Here it's more of a mesh and you can see, this is a lino cut by the way, not a Japanese woodblock, and you can see how I'm playing with the idea of in focus, out of focus again. So same theme as this next print, this kind of idea of the gully and then beyond. And after that, comes this little print which is part of the prints that I'm selling for the artist support pledge and actually was developed as my um, example print for my second lino block series on YouTube and here I was really excited by the this sort of black line block which is very different for me I developed it as a way of showing people how to do multi-block but actually the takeaway from doing that was that I really like this. So that has fed into this. And also I just wanted to show you this rather beautiful bowl. This is by a sculptor called Paul Caton. And this is a Hollywood bowl. Um, and 
that's confusing. We ha actually have a place called Hollywood Bowl nearby. So let me try again. This is a bowl made of holly wood. And um, we've had this for, oh, well over a couple of decades, I think. And I, I love this bowl. And I've always loved the texture of it. And you'll see that there is a certain amount of similarity between that bowl and the texture here. So you can see that kind of um, organic moving forward of ideas. So although I didn't plan this, it's kind of emerged and I'm going with it. When I start printing, I might edit it and cut some bits out if it's a bit too full on. But for now, I'm going with it. And I just want to show you a little bit of cutting with this block. Now I'm going to come and cut the block. The tools that I'm working with are a Hangito, the outline knife, and that's the tool that I'm using not only to cut the outline but to cut out all these little interiors of the rock face. But I'm also going to use a V tool, and I haven't mentioned these before because they're not particularly relevant to cutting the outline or clearing the block. So in my previous films, I haven't spoken about them. Indeed, they aren't entirely useful for Japanese woodblock. You would think with that nice sloping profile that they would be a great solution for cutting around the edge of the block. Um, I don't recommend it because I don't think it's anything like as good as learning to use a hangito properly, but they are good for a kind of looser artistic rather than craft approach to doing some line work. So I am using a V tool here for cutting out this area, the kind of, I don't know, it almost looks like fur, doesn't it? That kind of the lines that are going to be on the turf area of the block. So what I'm going to do is to show you a little bit of cutting. And I want to cut with my V tool in this turf area here but what I don't want to do is to be cutting lines and to, to cut through the lines and into the rocks. So the first thing I'm going to do is run an outline cut around these rocks here so that when I start cutting with my V, it'll hit a cut and will, the wood will be cut and it will stop rather than just carrying on through. So I'm going to do that first. And here I'm cutting along the outside of the carbon line to give myself a sort of fire break, if you like, for what I'm doing when I come to cut with the V-tool. And this cut here, I am not going to go back on myself and take a sliver of wood out because I don't want to have a trench, I just want to stop the V cuts when they come to the rock area. So this is just a little stop cut that I'm putting in here. Okay, so I have gone around now and put my little cut in and now I can use the V tool to do the more fluid organic kind of cutting. And this, this kind of cutting, much more instinctive, I'm not following. I've drawn in a few guidelines with pencil, but that's really just to get me feeling the flow of the, the lines I need to cut. And that little cut line that I did first is going to stop the wood tearing or being a problem when I come up against the rock. So I would use a V tool very much for this kind of fluid mark making. Almost like using a, a pencil to draw with, if you like.
And this really appeals to me because this is, is back to that thing of wanting to kind of describe a three-dimensional shape. So I wasn't expecting to have a block like this to print with um, when it came to this print. But I'm always open to prints developing as I work with them. In fact, if you followed my previous films, you'll know that nothing is fixed. Everything changes as I work. So um, I'm not a great planner. I'm, I'm very much for adapting and changing as ideas emerge. If they're good ideas, you know, you have to make the decision whether you want to pursue them or stick with plan A. But I'm kind of glad I don't work to commission very often because um, it would be tricky with a client to be able to chop and change as much as I do. So you can see here now I'm getting that kind of... Um, organic feel to it. If I take a little rubbing to show you. You can see that starting to develop those lines in that area. And the final thing I want to show you on this film is just cutting the interior of these little tiny spaces out. For this cutting out the little tiny shapes I'm absolutely going to do it with a Hangito knife because this is the most precise tool I own and it's by far the best suited for doing this job. With these little areas here I really don't need to go very deep because the little areas are all surrounded by the areas that are going to print which are going to act as supports for the paper so it's not like a big area here where the paper can slump into it when I'm printing and be a problem. Where it's very um, detailed here there's a lot of support and the cuts don't need to be anything like as deep, so I'm probably only going down a millimetre or so with these, which allows me to have a lot more control. You know, don't always, if you've watched my other films, you'll know this, but don't feel you have to cut everything to the same depth. It very much depends on what area of the work you're dealing with at the time as to how deep you need to cut. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen sometimes I do this sort of thing as a live feed where I'll just sit there and plug away at the cutting, um, which is a bit different from my Friday night live feeds, which are very much about chat and questions and answers. If you've not joined me on a Friday night for one of my live feeds, do. They're great fun. We get some amazing people asking really interesting questions and um, I do a bit of demoing and we just generally have a nice time. So um, if you ever want to join me on a live feed, you'll find the date of the next one on the home page on my website.
So that's the cutting out of the little stones, and I'm just going to plug away at this. This is a good time uh, when I listen to podcasts or to um, the radio, stuff like that, and I just settle down and plough on with this. So I hope that's been a bit of an insight into how my work develops and how it very much changes as I go along, and I hope you'll join me for the next film.